We don't walk back, we are back. And hey, this is the first time we're checking out a video from Mr. Ball and bro. So let's check it out. Let's see what he got for us today. The evil skeptics can't explain this shocking ending, my guy. What's going on here? Let's see. Today, we're going to learn about a little boy in India who for a time seemed like he was the worst behaved kid on the planet. But the truth was, that little boy had a huge secret. And when his secret got out, it changed everything anyone thought they knew about knew about this boy. And it prompted all these big time college professors from major universities all around the world to personally fly to India to investigate this kid's claims because the implications of what he was saying were massive. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark and mysterious delivered in story format, and you've come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please replace the like button's roll on deodorant ball with a single clove of garlic. Also, please subscribe <laughs> to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. Mr. Ballin, Mr. Ballin. Late one afternoon in December of 1986, a woman named Shanti Singh was sitting on her bed cradling her toddler son, whose name was Titu, as he threw a huge temper tantrum. Titu, who was three years old, had already been throwing this tantrum for about 30 minutes at this point, and it didn't seem like anything Shanti did was getting him to calm down. In fact, honestly, it just seemed like Titu was getting worse and worse by the second. And Shanti knew her son's constant wailing must be annoying her neighbors in the little rural village in northern India where they lived. But again, Shanti just felt like really there was nothing she could do. After all, this was not a typical toddler tantrum. Titu was not throwing this tantrum because he lost a toy or was fighting with his siblings or something. No, the reality was Shanti and her husband had no idea why Titu was throwing this tantrum because Titu threw these tantrums all the time for that, seemingly no reason and nothing they did would get him to stop. He would just start throwing these crazy fits and he would only stop when he was ready. Almost, that, must be, that must be frustrating. I'm not even going to lie. Bro, I got, I got five siblings, bro. They be throwing tantrums and you just be there like, what the hell do you want? And it's like, they don't even know what they want. And you're here like, oh my goodness, what do I do? Now, it's Shanti crazy. and her husband had taken Titu to the local doctor and he'd been examined. And the doctor said, look, I think your son's just fine. I can't mm. find anything wrong with him. So whatever's causing him to be so upset, it's got to be psychological. Shanti grabbed her son and tried to give him a hug and kiss to get him to calm down. But as she did that, you know, Titu turned around and tried to hit her in the face and kicked her and punched her. And so Shanti had to kind of fall back on the bed. And Titu, at this point, who's still throwing this huge tantrum, he leapt off the bed and ran out of the room. Now, Shanti had already sent the rest of her family, her kids, her husband, outside to wait out this current T2 tantrum. And so for a second, Shanti thought about just laying on the bed and letting her crazy toddler just kind of run around the house until he was done throwing this tantrum. Until, until but he comes as down, Shanti bro. was laying there on the Until he comes down. That, that's, you, sometimes you just gotta let them do their thing, man. Let them wild out and eventually they calm down. But sometimes it's really, really serious and you really need to address that and you can't, you have no clue. You have Bed, no clue practically wrong. crying from frustration, she heard a plate break in the kitchen. And so she jumped up and ran into the kitchen and there was Titu looking down at the ground where there was a shattered plate on the ground. Clearly Titu had smashed it on purpose. And so as mm. furious as Shanti was, she suddenly realized that, you know, nothing she could do was gonna get this kid to stop. And so right now, the only thing she could do was just put him in a safe place where he couldn't hurt other people or himself or damage anything else. And so Shanti, trying to be as calm as possible, walked up to T2, who's still throwing this tantrum and swinging at her as she's coming near him. And she grabbed him, she turned him around so he couldn't kick her or punch her. She put him into his room and then shut the door. And then she sat down in the hallway with her back up against the door to keep nah, it she, shut. And then she, as T2 inside the room bro. began, 
She's frustrated, bro. Banging on the door and trying to open it. You know, Shanti's sitting there anchoring the door and she's just praying that her son's gonna calm down soon. And then at some point, Shanti heard her son start to say something that typically signaled the end of a tantrum. Titu, in the bedroom, began saying the word Shirsh Verma, which actually was a nonsense word that Shanti and her husband and the other kids had no idea what it meant. But, you know, Titu, at the end of his tantrums, he would always just start saying over and over again, Shirsh Verma, Shirsh Verma, Shirsh Verma. And so Shanti, she's in the hall and she's hearing Titu start to do that. And so on the one hand, she's thinking, okay, you know, this tantrum's about to end. But on the other, she's like, I have no idea what that word means. You know, it's obviously connected in some way to what's going on with my son, but I have no idea what it means. It sounds like nonsense. And so Shanti began yelling through the door at Titu to explain what Shirsh Verma meant, but Titu had no explanation. He just kept saying the word over and over again. Shirsh Verma, Shirsh Verma, Shirsh Verma. Shanti and her husband had five other- Bro, Broski looks pissed. Oh my days, Broski looks pissed. Like he going through shit, bro. Other kids. Titu was the youngest, and Titu was not like any of his other siblings. The other siblings did not throw temper tantrums like this, not at all. And in fact, Titu had been a difficult child even before he was born. Towards the end of Shanti's pregnancy with Titu, she'd become very, very sick, and in fact, had to be hospitalized for the entire last trimester. And then as a newborn baby, Titu basically didn't sleep at all, and he cried constantly, and so Shanti and her husband initially thought, you know, Titu must just be a very fussy baby, but in time, you know, as he grew into more of a toddler, it was clear to Shanti and her husband that Titu was actually a different kind of kid. He seemed like a very unhappy and kind of angry kid who was permanently on the verge of crying or throwing a fit. But it wasn't until T2 began talking at around two years old that Shanti and her husband really started to become worried. Because the things T2 was saying as a two-year-old were just not in keeping with what you would expect a two-year-old to say. And I'm not talking about the nonsense word that T2 would use during his temper tantrums, Shirsh Verma. Basically, T2 would say things that seemed to indicate that he genuinely hated everyone in his family. Now, nah, for context, nah. Shanti and her family- They should take bro bro to church. They should take bro bro to church, my guy. Oh my day, if that shit, bro. Look, I get it, as a parent, you want the best, bro. You wish, you wish the best for your kid. But bro bro been exhibiting some weird behavior. Just get him to a church, lock him there, leave him there for a week. Leave him there for a week. Let it sort itself out because I'll be spooked. I promise you, man, I'd be spooked. You, you're not gonna be two year old and exhibiting behaviors that, uh, ra, 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 it, nah, 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 nah. They were not poor, but they weren't rich either. They mm. lived in a little concrete home. They didn't have a TV or a car, and all the kids wore hand-me-down clothes. And Shanti actually handmade her clothes and her husband's clothes. But the family always had enough food to eat and they were educated and they seemed happy enough. It's just that they didn't really have the ability to do anything extra, like above and beyond a modest life. And Titu had never known anything different. This was his life from the day he was born. But when he learned to speak at around two years old, it was like all Titu wanted to talk about was how crappy of a lifestyle their family lived. For example, when Titu's mom, Shanti, would put on one of her saris that happened to be ripped, a sari is a traditional garment in India, Titu would look at what she was wearing and in toddler speak, you know, he would tell her that she looked terrible and that it looked like she was just wearing rags. Titu would also walk around their house and he would- Don't they beat children in India? Oh my God, I just said that. <gasps> oh my days, I just said that. Now I gotta bleep that shit out. <laughs> Oh my god, I don't say that. Oh my days, no. Nah. Point to spots in the house that looked dirty, and he would demand that somebody cleaned it up because he didn't want to live in a dirty house. And then whenever the family needed to go somewhere and they would walk there or take the bus there, Titu would complain the entire time that he wanted to be in a car. And why aren't we driving in a car? Like, why are we walking? Despite the fact... Reincarnation. I'm calling it reincarnation. The fact that Titu basically had never used a car before. But perhaps the strangest aspect of Tidu's behavior was around the time he began talking and insulting his family, he also began talking about this very historic city called Agra, which was located about eight miles away from where they lived. Agra was famous for being home to the Taj Mahal, which is considered to be one of the most beautiful buildings ever made. 
Agra also has a very busy downtown and lots of tourism, but Titu had never been to Agra, and there was no reason he would be drawn to Agra, like his family had no connection to that city. But starting around the time Titu began talking at two years old, he began asking to go to Agra several times a week. If he has never, nah, I'd be scared though. Cause how does he know? You feel me? Like, how does he know about the city? How does he know this? Bro Broski is too. Now, for a kid talking at two, a kid talking, this, a kid talking at two alone is crazy. You heard? But then a kid talking about all this stuff is not supposed to know at two. It's scary. It's scary. I don't even, I don't even want to know what the parents were going through, bro. And when his parents would say, no, we're not going to go to Agra, T2 would throw a huge tantrum. And so not long after T2 had begun speaking and saying all these terrible things, Shanti and her husband decided that really all they could do was just wait and hope their son grew out of this terrible behavior. That's all you but can T2 do. But T2 did not grow out of this. That's all you Shortly can after do, his parents decided to just kind of wait it out, T2 would randomly attack another small child with a sugar cane, and he beat the kid so badly the kid was bleeding at the end of the attack. And then also another time, shortly after the sugarcane beating, T2 was at the store with his mother, and his mom was looking at this bracelet, which she couldn't afford. She was just looking at it through the glass. And T2 sensed his mom wanted the bracelet, and in an odd show of affection for his mother, he turned to the shopkeeper, this little tiny kid who's not even three years old yet, and he tells the shopkeeper that if he doesn't give this bracelet to his mother for free, that T2 will shoot and kill the shopkeeper. Bro, and so bro. after this... Bro, bro, nah, nah, nah. Lock that boy up, bro. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. The behavior, bro. Listen, every parent loves their kid. Every parent doesn't want to be the one to realize or admit their kid got problems. But if a broski adds two, he's talking about ancient historic cities it's talking about our lifestyle is shit it's talking about i want to go into a car even if i've never been into I'm, okay that one is kind of normal but then bro bro said i'm gonna shoot your ass if you do not give my mom ski that nah <laughs> nah lock him up <laughs> Auntie and her husband just stopped taking t2 out in public at all it was just too embarrassing but what really just unsettled Shanti the most about her son's behavior was that nonsense word that T2 kept saying at the end of all of his tantrums, Shursh Verma, Shursh Verma. And so fast forward to that day after he's broken the plate and now Shanti's put him in his room, T2 began saying that nonsense word, except he was getting a little bit older and his speech was getting a little bit more clear. And so as Shanti was laying up against the door, she realized that her son was not saying a single word, Shursh Verma, he was saying two words. They were Suresh Varma, but Shanti had no idea what that meant. She thought it sounded like a name, but it was a name she had never heard before. But one day, a few months after the dish breaking incident in April of 1987, all of T2's very strange, erratic, terrible behaviors would erupt all at once. That April day started out like any other. Shanti made breakfast for her family, and then her husband headed out to do some errands, and her six children kind of dispersed around the inside and outside of the house to play, study, whatever. But Titu was really grouchy, and so he stayed inside in the kitchen with Shanti. A little while later, Shanti's oldest son came into the kitchen, and he asked his mother, hey, when will dad get back from his trip to Agra? Shanti's husband had gone to Agra to run one of his chores, and Agra was the city that Titu was... And they didn't tell T2. Hey, they didn't tell my guy. Hey, yay, 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 yay. No wonder everything exploded at once, man. No wonder every single bad behavior exploded. Broski been saying he wants to go there forever. But uh, this story is kind of spooky. And we haven't even got into the juicy part. And uh, I, I'm like... I'm almost like I don't want to hear the rest of it. But I want to hear the rest of it. Nah, that's crazy, bro. Totally obsessed with. And so when Shanti's oldest son said the word Agra, Titu, who was sitting in the kitchen, he heard it and kind of looked up like he was totally fixated on their conversation. And then as Shanti and her oldest were talking about the dad, Titu just got up, 
left the kitchen and he went to his room. He grabbed a couple of things and then he came back into the kitchen carrying this bundle of clothes with him and he walked right past his brother and his mother. He went out the front door and began running down the road without saying a word. Remember, this is like a three-year-old child. This is not a teenager, this is a little kid. And so Shanti and her oldest son, they kind of watched in shock as T2 ran off down the road. And for a minute, neither of them did anything. And then it was like they broke out of their trance and the oldest son just turned and began running out of the house to catch up with T2. Now, it didn't take long for the oldest to catch up with. It's almost like they were like, maybe we should just let him go. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should just let him go because it's getting a lot. It's becoming to be a lot, bro. Like, if we just let him run down that path into the horizon, we might never have to worry about it no more. And then they woke up and was like, I swear, this is my son. And this guy was like, hey, yo, that's my brother. And then he started running after him. With his young brother, but it was surprisingly hard to stop T2 from trying to run away. He fought back as hard as he could to keep his brother from pulling him back to the house. And then when the older brother got T2 back inside, Shanti looked at her older son and she saw he had a black eye from where T2 had just hit him. And when Shanti turned to T2 to try to get him to apologize to his brother for hitting him, she saw T2 was completely inconsolable. He was throwing a huge temper tantrum. He was on the ground kicking and flailing and screaming at the top of his lungs. And so Shanti and her oldest son knew there was no hope in getting him to calm down. He was deep into one of his tantrums. Bro. And so Shanti and the oldest just basically That's restrained T2 so he couldn't hurt himself or one of them or damage anything. And for a while, as they held him to the ground, T2 just continued to scream and flail and throw this fit. But eventually he did kind of calm down and he began saying Suresh Verma, Suresh Verma over and over again. But then he began talking about something that he really hadn't brought up before that stood out to Shanti and her oldest son. T2, in addition to saying periodically Suresh Verma, Suresh Verma, also began talking about some radio store in Agra. And T2 kept saying, why didn't dad bring me to the radio store? Why didn't he bring me? And so as Shanti is listening to her son. Nah, that's, that's scary. Nah, that's scary, bro. How does bro know? You feel me? How do he know? God. And she suddenly thinks, you know what? This is my chance. He's being so specific about this radio store. You know, maybe this is my opportunity to lean in and learn what the heck is going on with my kid. And so once T2 fully stopped his temper tantrum and Shanti and her oldest could finally let go of him, once T2 had left the room, Shanti turned to her oldest son and she told him to go to Agra right now. Just go there and look for a radio store or something. Look for anything that could be a clue to what's going on with T2. He obviously has some fixation with the city. Just go, look around, see if you can find something. So the oldest son left the house and he went to one of his friend's houses who had a car and together they drove into Agra. Now, Shanti had no idea if her oldest son's trip to Agra would produce anything useful, but she figured, you know, she's got nothing to lose. A few hours later, when Shanti's oldest son returned from Agra, he came into their home with a very serious look on his face. And right away, Shanti could tell, clearly, he's discovered something. And so Shanti asked her oldest son, you know, tell me, what did you learn? What happened in Agra? And the oldest son, you know, he looked down for a second, and then he looked back at his mom and he just said, tomorrow? We're gonna have visitors. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my days, nah, nah, that's crazy. Oh, 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 oh my god, nah, that's crazy. Are you a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious? If so, then you're in luck. Because our massively popular show, the Mr. Ballin Podcast, which since the end of 2022 has been exclusively on the Amazon Music platform, is now available on all podcast platforms, and it's free. There are over 200 episodes in the back catalog of this show. And of those 200, at least half of them have never been told on YouTube. They are only available on the wow. podcast. And you can find those exclusive episodes by looking for the words podcast exclusive in the individual episode title. So again, the highly popular Mr. Ballin podcast is once again available on all podcast platforms and it is free. To listen, just search for the Mr. Ballin podcast on Amazon Music or wherever else you get 
get your podcasts and then give the show a follow and then start your binge. Oh, and also, if you are one of the amazing people who subscribed to Amazon Music to follow the Mr. Ballin podcast when it went exclusive, don't give up your membership on Amazon Music. With DataCamp, you don't need to download Python to learn Python. You can learn right in your browser with hands-on exercises for coding. The next day, a car pulled up in front of Shanti's home and six people climbed out. There was a woman wearing a beautiful red sari who appeared to be in her 30s, and then there were three other men who also appeared to be in their 30s, and they were all wearing suits and jackets. And there was also an older couple, a man and a woman, and the man was wearing this beautiful sweater, and the woman had on all this silk. It was clear, just from the way they looked, that these six people were not from this area. They were from somewhere else, and they had a ton of money. Now, Shanti was inside the house and she was watching this group arrive, but she did not go outside to greet them. She, her husband, and all of her kids, minus T2, had decided the night before, when they knew these visitors were gonna arrive, that they wouldn't go out and talk to them. Instead, they would just allow T2 to basically make first contact with these people and see what happens. So when Shanti saw this group of six very well-off people were standing right outside of their Why gate, they? kind of waiting to be let in, she called for Titu and said, hey, go outside and open the gate for our guests. And so Titu, who was not throwing a fit at this point, he came running through the house. You know, I just clocked what they are doing. They are letting Titu, why? Why are we letting the kid who throws tenter tantrums and who has been rum rumbling about this place that these people came from? for his entire life. Why are we letting him go and talk to them first? That kind of makes sense though, I'm not even gonna lie. Bruh, bruh, imagine he knows them, bro. Oh my days, bro. bro. And he went to the door, he's not looked outside yet. He opens up the door and he runs outside and he sees these six people on the other side of the gate. And suddenly Shanti heard Titu make a sound that he never made. It was like the sound of pure joy. He was so elated to see these six people. Shanti couldn't believe it. For a second, Shanti closed her eyes and almost started crying because she knew even before Titu had made that joyous sound when he saw these people, they were about to solve the mystery of what was going on with her son. Just then, Shanti heard Titu from outside yelling for Shanti and the rest of his family to come outside and meet his other family. Shanti went to the door and gestured for the guests to come inside. What did I say? He knows them. Bro, oh my days, my guy and then she led them through the house to the back deck and then after they were all seated Shanti looked over at her son Titu and she saw he had this huge grin on his face he was so happy and he was staring intently at the woman who got out of the car who was in her 30s and wearing the beautiful red sari and she was sitting right across the table from Titu and Titu is just locked on her now, at this point, nobody is speaking. Everybody is just sitting there. No introductions have been made, so nobody even knows each other's names. And in this kind of tense and awkward silence, Titu, who again is just staring at this woman in red, he eventually breaks the silence, the three-year-old child, and he asks the woman in red to come sit next to him. And so the woman in the red sari, she does what he asks and moves over and sits next to the toddler. And then Titu looked up at her and he smiled and he said, do you know who I am? And the woman, she's looking down at him and she said, no, I don't. And Titu would look back up at her and he would say, I know who you are, you're Uma. And at this, the woman in red, whose name really was Uma. Ooh, that hit me. Ooh, that sends chills down my spine. I'll promise you, nah. Uma, she gasped. She had no idea how this kid knew who she was. But before she could even say anything, Titu continued. And he said to her, hey, do you remember when we went to the fair with Ranu and Sanu and I bought you those sweets? And at this, the woman in the red sari, Uma, she had this new look come over her face. Instead of looking like she was just kind of shocked and appalled that this random kid knew who she was, now it was like a look of shocked recognition as she's looking down at Titu, like she suddenly understood what was actually going on. And at the same time, Titu's mother, Shanti, was watching this happen and she was kind of piecing together what was really going on here and suddenly she realized she needed to check something and she got up and she ran out of the room and she came back with scissors and without saying anything Shanti went straight to Titu she pushed his head to the side exposing his right ear and she used those scissors and began cutting all the hair off his head that was kind of drooped over his right ear kind of exposing the right side of his skull 
and as the hair on Titu's head fell to the ground, exposing more and more of the right side of his head, all the adults watching just gasped, and the whole time, Titu was just smiling. To understand what just happened out on that back porch between these random people and Shanti and her family, you need some context. So here's what happened when Shanti's oldest son was sent to Agra to go investigate and look for clues that could explain what was going on with Titu. Bro, what is going on? What is this dude is living suspenses? What what did he they see behind his right ear? I, I'm calling Bert Mark, but what is this an actual case of a reincarnation? Bro. The brother and his friend had driven all around Agra, you know, looking for radio stores and looking for things that might in some way kind of connect to T2, and they didn't see anything. But at some point, they drove past one of the many radio stores in Agra, and the name of this radio store immediately stood out to the brother and his friend. So the older brother and the friend, they parked their car and they went into this particular radio shop and inside of there is where they met Uma, the woman who had the red sari on, who was in her 30s, that T2 said we went to the fair together with, that woman. So she's inside this radio shop and when the older brother asked Uma how this radio shop got its name, that was when things began to fall into place for this older brother about what was going on with T2. Uma would tell the older brother that this radio shop actually belonged to her husband, except three and a half years ago, he was murdered. He was shot and killed. Ooh. And so she had been running the shop what? ever since. And Uma said she had considered changing the name of the shop, you know, since taking it over, but she just couldn't bring herself to change it because the shop's name was actually based on her husband's name. The name Ooh. of the shop was what? Suresh Radio Shop. Her husband's name was Suresh Verma the two words that Titu would say all the time at the end of his tantrums, Suresh Verma, Suresh Verma. That was Uma's husband. And it would turn out the details of Suresh's death matched up in a very bizarre way with Titu's birth. And all of Titu's totally erratic, strange, terrible behavior throughout really his entire life to this point now suddenly made sense if you knew about Suresh's life. Many people, including professors from major universities in India and America, oh. have come to believe that what happened with Titu was when Suresh was murdered, his spirit somehow came out of his body and entered Titu's body. Basically, Suresh was reincarnated in Titu. This reincarnation theory would explain why T2 was always saying Suresh Verma, because in theory that was his real name, you know, that's the guy who died, who then his spirit transitioned to T2, so he's saying his name over and over again. And then also T2's obsession with Agra would make sense, because that's where Suresh's radio shop was and where he lived. Also, the reincarnation theory would explain why T2 was so critical of- Listen, listen bro, listen. I don't know, this dude tells good stories. This dude knows how to keep me in, bro. Nah, I look. I couldn't even. I couldn't even like talk to you guys as much as I wanted to because I was so hooked. I'm so hooked in the story, my guy. It's crazy. So wait, 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 wait. All the scientists in the chat right now, bro. Every single science person. What do you make of this, bro? What do you, do you, are you calling fact or cap, bro? Are you calling fact or cap? Because if, if this actually happened, that's proof. of Shanti and the rest of his family's lifestyle, basically accusing them of being poor and kind of living below his station. Well, Suresh's family was very, very wealthy. And so that was the lifestyle Suresh had lived. And so if his spirit was now in Titu's body, he might be at odds with their lifestyle. And lastly, the reincarnation theory would explain the two very unique and very pronounced birthmarks that T2 had it. right next to his right ear. He had one right above it. his right ear and right below it. Now, these were birthmarks that Shanti was well aware of, but after she learned about how Suresh Verma was killed, he was shot in the side of his head and the bullet went in above his right ear and then came out on the bottom part of his right ear, right here. Oh. When she heard that, she ran and got the scissors. She cut the hair away around Titu's ear, revealing the two birthmarks. And then the other families saw those birthmarks and they're like, oh my goodness, 
that is literally where the entry and exit wounds were on Suresh. And then also it's worth pointing out that on the day Suresh was shot and killed, well basically that day was when Titu's mother, Shanti, began feeling really sick during her pregnancy with Titu and she had Whoa. to be hospitalized. After this discovery about what? Titu and Suresh Verma, Shanti and her husband and the rest of her family expected Titu to want to live with Uma and his other family. And at first, that is what Titu wanted to do, but pretty quickly he actually decided that, you know what, I want to stay put with the family I was born into, and we can just visit with the other family. And so that's what they did. You know, Uma and the other wealthy family, they made visits all the time to see T2 and vice versa. You know, the families got along great. And as for T2, you know, he was really happy. You know, his bad behavior basically went away and he became a normal, high-functioning kid. And T2 has grown up and become a very happy and successful adult. He's got a family of his own and he's currently a professor at a college in India. What? In the very early morning hours of December 26, 1980, Airman Steve Longaro was on a foot patrol at the Royal Air Force Base near Rendlesham Forest in the UK. And as Longaro walked along, suddenly this alarm sounded across the base. And based on the sound of this alarm, Longaro knew this was not a drill. And so instinctively he turned and began sprinting towards his assigned firing position right along the perimeter of the base. And as Longaro ran towards his position, he looked around him and he saw hundreds of other soldiers doing the exact same thing. But once Longaro actually reached his firing position and looked out, you know, looking for the threat that's coming into the base, he realized he didn't see anything. But then when he turned to look at his colleagues to ask them, you know, what's going on here, he noticed everybody else was not even looking outside the base. They were kind of looking off to the side towards Rendlesham Forest because there was something out there kind of hovering in the trees that was casting this very eerie red light over everything. And this was just the beginning of what would go on to be one of the most credible and unsettling paranormal events in history. If you want to hear this absolutely crazy story, then you need to check out one of our newest podcasts out of Fallen Studios. Nah, this dude, this dude, this dude know how to tell a story crazy, bro. But that story about that 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 kid, that's some eerie. How come this stuff didn't get the media coverage it deserves, bro? It proves that the like, how do you even explain that? You feel me? Or was it all made up? Was it all fabricated? If it was, man, that was, that, bro. They went through lengths to fabricate that joint, bro. They went through everything lines up perfectly the mother getting sick the nigga getting killed the the birth the birth mark the memories nah 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 that's crazy bro that's crazy you should definitely think about it in the comments bro because wow i'm gone man remember to subscribe